The summer heat had turned into the chill of fall as the days shortened with haste. Late in the year, night creeps into our waking day, ever vigilant and foreboding. It had been some years since I ventured out into the woods, but still, they coaxed me into a visit. So I took a week off of work and planned a solo adventure into the Smoky Mountains. After an anxious drive to the trailhead, I left my car and set out on my own to enjoy the silence of the mountains, or so I thought. I was immediately blindsided by the pure loneliness one feels on the trail. The mind tends to wander while walking long distances, and when it snaps back to reality, it usually notices an odd noise. Every so often, the urge to turn around and investigate those sounds of the forest hit me. But time was the enemy. I needed to reach camp before dark. After what felt like hours, with only my footsteps and breathing to keep me company, I arrived at my campsite for the night. An assembled tent and a full stomach later, I laid down. Exhaustion didn't come close to describing how I felt. Yet I fell to sleep well that night, tossing and turning until the sun rose again. The new day came with its own set of challenges. My lack of sleep, coupled with a poor mindset, only allowed me five miles that day. Before I knew it, the night had crept up on me again. So I hit my nightly routine and tried to get some sleep. This night brought no relief from my exhaustion, as the Sandman must have been on vacation. It was early in the morning, but still pitch black. I had been staring up at the tent ceiling when I first heard it. The sound of footsteps, crushing burnt orange leaves on the forest floor. I sat up immediately. The footsteps moved swiftly, and then came a grumble from outside the tent. No words were spoken, but whoever, or whatever just passed my tent, seemed angry. It was all I could do to remain silent and attribute the noise to the noise of the forest. But something in the back of my mind knew I had heard something. Sleep failed to come until the sun rose, which led to an extremely late start to the next day. After a week attempt to eat breakfast, I sat out onto the trail again, but had very little energy left. It wasn't but a few miles later when I tossed my pack down and gave up on the day. With nightfall close, I thought I would search for firewood. By the time night had come, I had a decent sized fire going. Fire is an interesting tool. In the moment, it gave me comfort and a great deal of relief from the noises of the forest. A quick bathroom break quelled the rest of my anxiety that had been building over the last couple of days. A sense of calm washed over me as I walked back to the comfort of the fire. Just as I sat down, I felt a presence. Reaching into the light of the fire was a human hand. But this was no normal hand. This hand had burns all over it. This burnt hand extended towards my pile of firewood, and that's when I saw the rest of him. The burnt hand extended from a long-sleeved red plaid shirt, black with soot, and plenty of holes burnt through it. The man's red beard flickered in the firelight, and when I looked up to make eye contact, I found myself staring at vacant, white eyes. In a split second, the scorched man was gone. I closed my eyes, squeezing them with force to erase what I had just seen. Was it real? Was I dreaming? I opened my eyes and scanned the darkness. Nothing. Just me and the sound of a crackling fire. So I gathered my things and left immediately. I tried to get away as far away as possible from whatever I had just seen. I continued down the trail, so scared I refused to turn my headlamp on in fear of something spotting me. So I stumbled around in the dark, hopelessly sticking to the trail, praying not to hear any noise. In reality, I had yet to learn where I was headed. I just had to get away. Finally. The sun peeked out over the foggy ridge enough for me to see again. So I doubled down and picked up speed, 
looking for any signs of civilization. By this time, I had been hiking for hours. I truly didn't know how long, but it was long enough that my body simply gave out in the middle of a pasture. So I set up my tent in the afternoon sun and fell asleep. I awoke a few hours later to a funny smell. The smell of burning plastic. When I opened my eyes, instead of seeing the tent ceiling, I saw only sky. I jumped up and saw my tent and had disappeared in front of me. The only pieces left of my tent were the structural poles which had a little bit of bubbling material on their edges, as if a fire had burnt the tent away. Unsure whether this was a nightmare, I leapt to my feet, grabbed my pack, and sprinted further into the pasture. Eventually, I made it to a gravel road. I spotted a vehicle down the road and approached it. As if my luck had completely turned around, there was a sheriff, and I was beyond happy to see him. When I reached the sheriff's car, I noticed that it was parked outside of the remains of a burned down house. Rather than fill the sheriff in on my own experience, I kept quiet while he took me back to town. On the way, the sheriff explained to me that on the day that I left for my trip, the house burnt down. Two daughters, a wife, and a husband were all in the house when it caught fire and none of them survived. The only thing found at the scene were pieces of a burnt, long-sleeved, red plaid shirt.